Hey, God bless you, my friend and sister Sharon. And today I got my trumpet out because we need to deal with the false doctrine, the false teaching that is destroying countless believers' minds and hearts to believe in that you are somehow going to be punished if you do not have a church home, if you are church hopping, if you are moving around, if you are at home, if you're just not in these organized churches, oh, God is saying, sound an alarm. Because many of you, these are doctrines of devils that Paul told us in the latter days, many are going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And why would I attribute or the spirit of God in me, this teaching as being a doctrine of devils? Because my friend, any teaching, any indoctrination that takes you away from Jesus Christ, that takes you away from the finished work of Christ, who liberated us from the law of sin and death, any doctrine that puts you under mental duress and cause you to feel that God is going to get you because you're not obeying this law it is not from God. The Bible tells us, my friend, and we need to hear it and understand it, that Romans chapter 8 verse 14 says this, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And in that text, sons mean male or female. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery that returns you to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship by whom we cry, Abba, Father. My friend, once you come to know that God is your father, he is your heavenly father. When you come to know that Jesus is a good shepherd, and he said that the Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us. He will teach us and you need no man to teach you. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice and a strange voice they will not follow. Now, my friend, when you have been put under mental duress by mostly corrupt pastors, predatory pastors, they run in packs, they're wolves howling around that if you're church hopping and you don't have a church home, you're the devil, you're a rebel and you're this and you're that. No, my friend, let me help you because they use this scripture out of Hebrews chapter 10 that the writer whose scholars are not even sure who wrote the book of Hebrews some believe that it was uh, uh, Aquila, it was his wife Priscilla that wrote this, this, this letter in Hebrews. But this scripture has been used to harm God's people. The scripture tells us, do not forsake the assembling of yourself as the matter of some. But when you keep this scripture in context, and this is very important for you to catch this part, my friend, listen to what it says. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Now follow me very closely. This is the most important part when we put this scripture back in context. The writer went on to say, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. 
anyone who rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more, follow me, my friend, how much more severely do you think a man deserves to be punished who has trampled the son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing, the blood of the covenant that sanctify him and who has insulted the spirit of grace. In other words, my friend, when you keep this scripture in context, the writer is concerned that the people fall away and go back into to sin, living in sin. My friend, these corrupt, predatory preachers that try to keep you under their regimes and keep you in their memberships do not teach or preach against sin. And that's what the writer was concerned about. My friend, if you do not learn how to study and divide the scriptures, any person with a, a, a evil intent to keep you subject to them can bamboozle you. My friend, if you have God's spirit, you are to be led by him. And the last thing he wants you to do is sit in the midst of a corrupt fellowship where the so-called pastor is a wolf. That's why you are feeling fearful to move around to look for someone and a group of people that is about the father's business. They're about living holy. They will provoke you to live holy because that's what the writer's intent was. Don't not do not walk away from meeting and fellowshipping with true believers who are going to provoke you to come out of sin. My friend, these pastors that constantly try to bully you and get you to believe you the devil for, for wanting to visit other churches and not having a ch church home, do not teach about sin. They do not keep you sharp in the spirit. They do not talk about the blood of Jesus. They don't talk about the sacrifice of Jesus. They don't give to the poor. And if and when they do, they make sure everybody knows what they do. My friend, these are the same preachers who are riding uh, in their fancy cars and pulling up into their two million dollar home uh, driveways every Sunday after they done got your tithe money. Oh friend, don't believe the hype. It's a game. They're liars. This is not a law of God. It is a tradition and a teaching of men of corrupt minds who wants to keep tabs on your money. Don't make no mistake about it, my friend. You are to be led by the spirit of God, and he is not going to lead you to sit in the midst of any fellowship where they are teaching false doctrine. They are lifting up the pastor like he's a little demigod, him and his first lady and his armor bears. My friend, come out from amongst them and begin to walk with the great shepherd. He is not going to put you under any mental duress. He's going to lead you to find rest. So you preachers that are trying to intimidate, bully, and harass God's people with this do not forsake the assembly of yourself hogwash. You know what, why you teaching it because you want to make sure you getting paid. Well, today you are served notice. If you don't back up from lying on God, taking the scriptures out of context, you're not preaching the cross. You're not preaching the Christ. You are preaching dog that's been passed down for the benefit of the shady shepherds. God have mercy on your soul. My friend, if you have uh, heard the truth about the false doctrine of first fruits and tithing, and you are now concerned because the devil's kids done tricked you to thinking you need a church home. No, you need to make sure that you are a citizen in the kingdom of God because they push membership and not citizenship. Are you a citizen in the kingdom of God? Because in this kingdom, my friend, rest assured as I tell you, there is only one king and his name 
is Jesus. And trust me when I tell you, my friend, he is more than able to lead and to guide you into still waters where you will find rest for your soul. My friend, I challenge you with this thought that that when you consider the facts that before there was ever a pastoral uh, office, before there was ever a prophet, before there was ever an apostle or an evangelist, the Bible tells us in Genesis chapter six, verse nine, that Enoch and Noah walked with God. God is saying, come away, my beloved children, and walk with me. He wants you to trust him, my friend. He wants to get your mind straight and deliver you from these damnable doctrines of devils that got your heart troubled. You don't have no joy. You don't have no peace because the fake shady preacher wants you to believe that you got to be a member of their, their, their clubs and cliques and denominations. Be set free, my friend and learn to walk with God. I am getting emails from many of you who have come out of the false doctrine of tithing and you don't know what to do with yourself or your money. Be led by the spirit of God. The New Testament believer, we give not out of compulsion, but as our heart purpose to give. My friend, go to your local grocery store and look for some of those single mothers and help them out. My friend, if you have a brother in Christ that's in a crisis, he's lost his job, give that money to him. Be led by the spirit of God. If you have a preacher that you love and you understand that they are, they have your best interest, by all means, bless them. We, 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 we need your blessings. My friend, when we preach the truth, the Bible teach in Galatians, you should want to give to your teachers, take your money and bless your real teachers. My friend, some of you are just so lost. You must understand friend that God wants you to be a good steward over your money. Once you have come out of that false doctrine, go to my website, my friend. This is not rocket science. Go to my website. For some of you, you have not listened intently to the four video teachings the Holy Ghost gave me regarding tithing. Motivating you to win.com. Get, listen, my friend. Jesus wants you to be free. Because this dogma and this doctrine about uh, uh, do not forsake the assembly of yourself is all about the Benjamins. That's what it's about, my friend. And I can assure you, every pastor that, that preaches this dogma, they fit all the signs that I've given you in my other teaching. Go get it. I'm dressed as the clown. 15 signs of a spiritual jester. Friend, make no mistake. When you do not become a serious student in the word of God, trusting Holy Spirit to be your teacher, you are subject to every wind of doctrine by shady evil, wicked, corrupt men and women that want that money. And they use these scriptures to put you under mental duress to control you. But as I've said, and I'll say it again, whom the son has set free, you are free indeed. Now, my friend, as I close this exhortation, I beseech you in the name of Jesus to go and study the entire chapter of Romans chapter eight. I encourage you to study the book of Galatians chapter two, three, four, and five. I want you to eat it like dinner. And I guarantee you, my friend, 
Jesus is going to meet you and he's going to liberate you by the Holy Ghost. Visit churches as you will, but your communion and your fellowship with the Christ, with God the Father and the Holy Ghost is vitally important in this hour. And I need you to hear me, my friend, as I, as I make this last statement. Never forget, only five plus three, only eight people was saved from God's wrath. God is not into numbers. He is looking for his sons, male, female, to follow him. The institutional church as we know it in America is corrupt. Corrupt. And your brothers and sisters may be scattered. You could be in a church with 25,000 people sitting in those chairs, chairs and only 10, 10 of them actually are citizens and sons of God. So please, my friend, get this out your head. The real church is not in a building. It's me. It's you. And you have to allow Holy Spirit to give you discernment when you meet a fellow son of God. We are scattered all over the world. But I can assure you, my friend, most pastors with this dogma have a secret agenda. They want you in those seats. And they want that money because church is a business. And in order for the CEOs of these businesses to have retention and customer, good customer sales, friend, they sell, which is the word of God, because this is their product. They got to find those scriptures, my friend, to bind you up. God bless you, my friend. Be wise, be wise, and more importantly, be free. God bless. Till next time, come out from amongst them and be separate, says the spirit of the living God.